Welcome to Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Night. Hadley Mothers Club has sponsored Candidates Night for over 25 years. My name is Denise Devine and I'm the president of the Hadley Mothers Club. I would like to thank Mary Jane Bacon, our moderator for the evening, Richard Tuswell from TV5, who will be airing the um, program tonight. Also the staff of um, the custodial staff of Hopkins Academy for setting up the space tonight and all the candidates for coming and uh, Peg Jekinowski and Jessica West for organizing this evening and all of the um, Mothers Club members who are here tonight helping and um, I would like to introduce Mary Jane Bacon our moderator Good evening. I want to welcome you all to the Hadley Candidates Night, which as you know is sponsored by the Hadley Mothers Club. We're going to go over some of the rules. Each candidate will have five minutes for an opening statement. Candidates may ask fellow candidates one question that is based on the issues only. Question candidates will be given two minutes for a response. At the conclusion of the candidate's statements, and that's all of the candidate's statements, there will be a short break so that written questions for the candidates may be accepted from members of the audience. There are cards available at the tables at the back for this purpose. All questions must be signed. Questions that do not deal with issues or that might damage a candidate's character will be disqualified. Questions may be confined for convenience. The first candidates you're going to hear from tonight are running for three-year terms for the Board of Selectmen. There are two positions. The first one to speak is Joyce Chunglo. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joyce Chunglo. And I am here tonight to ask the voters of Hadley to re-elect me to the Board of Selectmen. But first, let me thank the Mothers Club for hosting Candidates Night, as they have done for many years. To the moderator, Jane, Mary Jane Bacon, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. And to the citizens for coming out tonight. I have lived here in Hadley for the past 44 years with my husband, Dan, raised two children, all of who have graduated from Hopkins Academy, and I still, res and still reside here in town. I have worked at Cooley Dickinson Hospital for the past 44, 45 years as a nurse, hopefully maybe for a couple more years. It has been an honor and privilege to have served this community for the last 27 years, 15 years on the school committee, and for the past 12 years on the Board of Selectmen. I have negotiated contracts, I was a member of the search committees for, and, and ultimately the hiring of the senior center director, Susan Travesino, the Hadley fire chief, Michael Spankenable, and the Hadley police chief, Michael Mason. I have been the liaison to the fire and police and dispatch for the past five years, and I was also part of the um, vote to make the formation of the building committee which is in a long process now of what to do with our buildings in town. I have also marched in the Memorial Day Parade for the last 27 years. I felt it was an honor and a privilege to do that and my duty as an elected official. These are my qualities. I have dedicated my time. I have open-mindedness, common sense. I'm a good communicator and I'm a good listener. With these qualities, I am able to make informed decisions for the best interest of the town of Hadley. I have represented the town of Hadley on the select board and in the school committee in a professional, appropriate manner at all times. Thank you for your support. I look forward to serving this community for another three years. Please vote on April 14th. Thank you.
The next candidate to speak is Gerald Devine. Thanks very much, I appreciate that. I'd also like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club and Mary Jane Bacon. And I'd like to spend a, send a special thanks out to Brian West, who for the last 12 years has dedicated his life to being a selectman for the town of Hadley. Thanks, Brian. It's a great honor for you to be here for 12 years, and I think everybody should recognize that. I'm a graduate of Western New England College with a BSBA in business management. My wife and my family and I live at, lived in Hadley for 23 years. Uh, we own and operate Divine Overhead Doors. That's Divine Overhead Doors. <laughs> we live at 106 West Street with a limited business zone on our house in the 14th oldest house in the town of Hadley. I feel strongly about being involved with our town and that's why I'm running for the Board of Selectmen. I started as a member of the Long Range Planning Committee and that's where I actually got a lot of my mojo for wanting to be a Selectman. We sent out a uh, flyer to a lot of different people and they told us what they wanted our community to look, for, look like. And we tried to follow that on the Board of Selectmen and we tried to do that on the Long Range Planning as well. I was a pet Selectman in the past from 2004 to 2010. I was a member at the Ad Hoc CPA Committee which eventually proposed to the CPA to be adopted. Uh, I was a founding member, one of the founding members of Hadley Park and Rec, a member of the Hadley Historical Society, a member of the Hadley Farm Museum, and I completed John Devine's term as Smith Charities after his passing, and then Sheila Konetsny, his daughter, took over after that. I was been the town moderator for the last four years, and it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve there as well. And I was also the 2013 recipient of the Fred Oakley Volunteer Award. It's important to be involved with local and state politics as far as the issues go. What affects most of us in Hadley affects us on a state level as well. A few weeks ago, I attended Senator Rosenberg's municipal conference, like I always do. Um, I also attended the mass municipal meetings as a select board member, each and every one of them while I was a select board member, and the mass moderators meeting as I was a town moderator as well. I keep informed with the state issues as well as the local issues. When I was first elected to the select board, one of the first things I did was to try to get our town hall painted. Again, with the CPA being the first thing that was involved, I worked really hard and diligently because that was an atrocity, I think, to the town of Hadley. We were able to use CPA funds to get that done, and I'm proud that it was got done. I spent a ton, we all spend a ton of time grumbling about uh, what's wrong with Hadley and, and everything that's going on that, that we're unhappy with. But I want to tell you how I view Hadley. Hadley's a beautiful community to live in, and I'm very proud to live here. 37% of our taxes are paid for by the businesses on Route 9. That's why our tax rate is low to the rest of us. We have the most preserved land of any town in the entire state of Massachusetts, and much of that land was paid for by CPA funds. Our school system has been an award-winning school system for the past three years running. Our roads are the best kept in Hampshire County, and well, that may not seem like a great thing to say, remember they work on the same budgets as everybody else, and drive anywhere in the winter and see that our roads are as good as anybody's. Better, I think. The crime rate in Hadley is statistically and significantly lower than the Hampshire County average for both personal and property crime. Ladies and gentlemen, that's big picture, and it's good news, especially considering the last eight years that we've gone through with the economic developments, with the economic problems. But did we see uh, Rob from Peter to pay Paul to get this done? We didn't. Our capital stabilization fund has $190,000 in it, and that didn't even exist 10 years ago. It's funded by our meals tax. Our sewer reserves have $612,000, and that's after the Loriana project was funded. Our water reserves have $758,000 in it. All reserve funds are higher than the state audit told us that we needed. It's good news. But I know it's not all fabulous news. We still have some things that need to be addressed. Like every other town, our department heads are looking for more money, just like every other town, like I said. I hear you that there's concerns about our moderator. I'm not our moderator. He's a great guy. About our town administrator, excuse me. And I hear you, and, and we're going to work to solve that one as well. And our Buildings Committee, which is meeting tonight, has the monumental task of putting our dire need of comprehensive plan for our large final 
of financial investments into the town's uh, buildings that need to be repaired. I look forward to working with these challenges, and I ask you to vote for me on April 14th. Thank you. The next candidate for selectman is John S. Mischkowski, Sr. Thank you, Madam uh, Chairwoman and Mother's Club, for this opportunity to speak to the residents of Hadley tonight. Good evening. My name is John Michkowski, Sr. My wife, Nancy, and I have resided in Hadley for over the past 50 years. Our four daughters and son were, were raised and educated in Hadley, and several of our 16 grandchildren continue in the Hadley school system. I'm the third of eight children. We work together on farming, farming the land and learning the, the ropes of heavy construction. Both environments taught me tolerance, disappointment, and the determination to work harder, especially when resources or help was scarce and the weather was uncooperative. With in enthusiasm, I taught myself to weld and understand the mechanics of heavy equipment and became the master mechanic for the family's construction business. Construction exposed me to know and work with many towns, companies, state agencies, the private sector, federal prop uh, projects, and the public officials at every level. In 1975, I established my own business, Arc Weldon, on Route 47 here in Hadley. All the while, also served as a volunteer fireman and the founder of the Hadley Aquatic Rescue Team, known as HART, what went on to represent all of Hampshire County. I served on those two teams for 20 years. I have served on many uh, other boards, the Select Board, the Sewer Commission, and presently the member of the Planning Board. Over the past years, I've served on many committees, the Hampshire County Charter Commission, the Waterways Committee, the Bike Path Committee, the Elementary Feasibility Committee, the Elementary School Building Committee, the Public Safety Complex Building Committee, and the Department of Public Works Committee. Thus, I have 51 and a half years total of service to Hadley, and in return, my history of Hadley has given me a deep and profound knowledge and passion to guide the future of Hadley. As you, as you can see, I have always had Hadley committed to the hearts of the Hadley people. I'm not focused on what surrounding communities will try to de determine for Hadley's best. I'm focused on what Hadley can do for its residents and its community in its entirety. It is up to us to carry on the tradition of our past residents. It is up to us to look to the future of what actions Hadley takes. How will Hadley handle inf uh, inflation, taxes, our water supplies, sewer, our public services such as schools, fire, police, DPW, Council of Aging, Library, Town Hall, Parks and Rec, and any issues that face the town. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm now retired and have the time to devote myself to research whatever issues could determine the future outcome of Hadley. We must be proactive, not reactive. Our chlorinated water is an example. I will do whatever it takes to improve our drinking water. I will encourage the board to take a total inventory and evaluate our, our infrastructure. I will support the morale of all the departments and the offices. I want this town to be affordable, both for the youth and for the elderly. I pledge to work hard and seriously and do my best for the town. I wish to thank Thank you for your past support and hope for, uh, to support uh, for, for, on a, for, for me for on election day for Tuesday, April 14th for selectmen of Hadley. 
Thank you for your consideration. And I also want to make a special thanks to the Mother's Club, not only for what they do for our children in the community, but what they do for the community. Thank you, Mother's Club. The next position tonight is for the Board of Health. There is one three-year term. Speaking tonight is Jennifer Gould. Hi, I'm Jennifer Gould. Um, I'm running unopposed for the Board of Health and I wanted to come out and take this opportunity to introduce myself. So, um, a little bit about me is I've lived in town for 14 years. I'm married with two children in the elementary school. I have a bachelor's of science in business. I'm a military veteran and a registered nurse. I currently work at Bay State, um, Bay State Franklin up in Greenfield. I have a background in emergency preparedness with a concentration in elderly and special needs. Special needs. Um, the way this kind of came about is I was walking my dog one day and I bumped into David Barnum and he just started talking to me and I would see him every day on my walk and um, he said he was going to retire and I didn't run for the Board of Health that year <laughs> so he's retiring again. I have big shoes to fill and I am interested in public health. I feel that I'll serve the town of Hadley well and I want to thank you in advance for your time and for your vote. The next position is for the planning board. There is one five-year term. Speaking tonight is Joseph Zagrodnik. Thank you for the invitation. People always ask, how did you ever initially get in, interested in running for the planning board? And like many people running for many boards, there is a crisis. And, and my primary mission was to, back then as it is now, is to preserve open space and agricultural land. When I came back into town after my schooling and military, the town was being inundated with developers with housing. We had very little uh, as far as rules and regulations. Uh, the schools were bulging at the seams. And in fact, uh, two of our members on the planning board, Bill Dwyer and Jim Maximoski, graduated in the early 70s. And I think they graduated with something like 80 kids in a class. So there was a crisis. So I ran for the planning board, and I've been on it for 35 years. And I am happy to say that Hadley is now the largest agricultural community in the state. I'd like to say I contributed something to it, but I probably contributed this much. One of the reasons that Hadley is such a good agricultural and agricultural friendly community is the fact that we have good land. Obviously, if you find a rock in, in the land in Hadley, somebody put it there. Plus, the farmers are hardworking and they can make a living at it. So, number one, Farmers can make a living in Hadley on the land. And number two is APR, Agricultural Preservation Restriction. This allows the farmers to sell the development rights, whereas before he was almost at the mercy of a developer. So the farmer can sell the development rights and still own, own the land. He can uh, sell it, farm it, do whatever he wants to do with the money. And that has been a tremendous boom to many, many farmers. One of the third reasons that uh, farming has become relatively successful in Hadley is uh, called 61A. 61A gives the assessors the ability to tax the land as its agricultural use rather than at its best and most productive and expensive use. So obviously it's reduced the uh, the taxes on the farmland tremendously. One thing with the APR, 
it was a rather controversial thing in the Great and General Court and under the Golden Dome, but eventually there was a coalition of people that uh, agreed that it would be good to preserve the agricultural land. And I was privileged to be invited at the signing of that bill by then Governor Dukakis at a farmhouse in Hadley. Now that we have this good agricultural land, obviously we still have to support it. And uh, one of the reasons we're looking for support is from the community itself, because every time a zoning change takes place, we need two-thirds of the town meeting vote to pass a zoning amendment. And that is necessary because it's not to be taken very lightly. So we're asking for your support to come to town meeting when there is a zoning article that may be controversial. The other thing is the planning board is going to be updating its long range plan. And we're going to be having some open sessions so you all are going to be invited to give your thoughts, ideas on what the future of growth should look like in Hadley. I thank you for your vote before, I thank you for your vote now, and urge you all to vote. The next position is for the school committee. There are two three-year terms. Speaking tonight is Paul Pfeiffer. Thank you. And like, my name is Paul Pfeiffer. I am running for the Hadley School Committee. I'm running as a write-in candidate for the three-year term. So fortunately, my name's a little easier to spell than some around town. It's P-H-I-F-E-R. I want to say thanks to the Hadley Mothers Club. When I told my nine-year-old who attends Hadley Elementary that I'd be uh, here at a Mothers Club event, he said, oh, those are the great people that give us food during the, the recent MCAS tests. <laughs> and I said, well, what do they give you? And he said, well, so they give us cookies and bananas. And he said, the, the best thing about it is that they would write little aspirational sayings on the bananas. So I said, well, what would they write? Well, way to go, you're almost done. I said, oh, that's great. What did your banana say? And he said, well, somebody had written on his banana the word banana. So, apparently the Mother's Club has a sense of humor, so I appreciate that. Uh, I'm running as uh, a candidate for the school committee for the three-year term, and uh, I am running because I love this community, and I really think the school is the heart of this community. We've been here six years, so I know we're, we're relative newcomers compared to most, but frankly, that's the longest I've ever lived in one place, and I've really grown uh, to love this town. And for us, the, the school has been, is the heart of it. And we've had a, a child in the school system every year we've been here. And I've played a role in the community mainly through volunteering, uh, through coaching. I've coached Hadley uh, Park and Rec soccer, CYO basketball, or Cal Ripken baseball. It's not only a way that I can spend more time with my children, but it's also a way for me to give back and to really invest in something that is important to me, the sports, the teams, and the nurturing that you can provide uh, for children at those ages. I've, uh, I've been invested not only in the volunteering aspect of this town, but also work here. I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, at, uh, which is the second largest employer in Hadley. There I work and I manage uh, endangered species issues, habitat restoration issues, for 11 field offices that are uh, housed from Maine to Virginia. So I manage about 150 people spread across 11 offices. I manage a budget of about $25 million. So I have familiarity with keeping the books and making sure that everything balances out. And I have a familiarity managing tough policy issues, uh, which I've come to learn are uh, somewhat uh, happen occasionally at the school committee. So I have familiarity with how to bring uh, transparency, how to bring thoughtfulness to understanding what the rules say, what the community wants, uh, and what are the best decisions. Really what I offer and what I'd like to offer uh, if you were to write me in as a candidate is really my experience, my time, and my dedication to, to make the school as best as it can be because not only is that the best for the community, it's really the best for the children. And for me that's really what this is about is giving back to the children. So please vote for me. Uh, on April 14th. Again, my name is Paul Pfeiffer, P H 
I-F-E-R. Thank you. The next position is for an elector under the Oliver Smith will. There's one three-year term. Speaking next is Sheila Konetsky. Good evening. Thank you to the Mothers Club for sponsoring this event tonight. I am pleased to be here tonight as a candidate for the elector under the Oliver Smith will. I've been a lifelong resident of Hadley and live here with my husband, Steve. We have two children, Jeffrey, who lives in Boston, and Emma, who is a student at Wagner College on Staten Island. I'm a graduate of UMass Amherst and have been employed there for over 30 years. Currently, I am the Associate Director of Financial Aid Services. Each year, I host many financial aid nights in the local high schools to help high school seniors and their families navigate the financial aid application process. So I'd like to, I came here tonight because I wanted to talk a little bit more about what the elector under the Oliver Smith will does because so many people have said to me, well, what do you do in that position? And so the elector for the Oliver Smith will represents the town of Hadley on the board of electors of Smith Charities. Other electors are selected by voters in the communities of Northampton, Hatfield, Amherst, Deerfield, Greenfield, Waitley, Williamsburg, and East Hampton. So Smith Charities was established in 1848 by the will of Oliver Smith. The will provides annual gifts for widows with children under the age of 18, brides, students studying in the trades, and nursing students. The office is located on Main Street in Northampton. If you know of a resident who may be eligible to receive one of these gifts, please contact me so that I can refer their name to the Board of Trustees. My father, John Devine, held this position for many years, and I am honored to continue the tradition of serving as Hadley's elector under the Oliver Smith will. I would appreciate your consideration next week in the election. Thank you. The next positions are for library trustees. You'll first hear from candidates for the three-year term. There are two positions. Speaking first is Allison Donata Venman. Good evening. My name is Allison Donta Venman, and I'm running for one of the three-year positions as library trustee. Like my colleague Joanne Knisney here, I'm running unopposed, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to come and uh, speak in support of our two candidates running for the two-year term, Maureen Jock and Alan Weinberg, who you meet, and to talk a little bit um, about the planning and design process. In addition to serving as the clerk for the library board since 2012, I'm also the chair of our planning and design committee. As you may recall, the library received a planning and design grant from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners in spring of 2014. And in May 2014, Town Meeting of Hadley voted to provide matching funds for this $25,000 grant. This is paying for all the work of the committee. The committee consists of our library director, representatives from the library friends and trustees, representatives from the community, and liaisons from the Municipal Building Committee and the Select Board. The committee is charged with writing the library building program, which is a document that serves as a guidebook from the library staff, the trustees, and the community uh, that is a guide to the architect who will be responsible for creating the schematic design for a construction grant proposal required for the next step in the process of taking a look at our library. The Planning and Design Committee will also be responsible for choosing an owner's project manager and an architect required by the grants and we'll, they will work with the architect to turn the building program into the schematic designs and plans that will be reviewed by the community. Many of you have already participated through uh, taking our community survey this past winter or participating in one of our public forums. Thank you. The building program is in the final editing process and will be available to the public at this town meeting. 
We're currently reviewing applicants for owner's project manager who will in turn help us choose an architect to bring this building program to life. The planning and design committee meets monthly at the library and meetings are open to the public, so feel free to stop by. We have a website where we publish our minutes, agendas, and additional information including all the results of the survey. Check us out at goodmanmemoriallibrary.wordpress.com. There's also a link to it on the library website. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about planning and design or my candidacy. Thank you and remember to vote. Speaking next is Joanne Konetsky. Good evening. I would like to start by thanking the Mothers Club for hosting this important event tonight. I am running for a three-year term as a library trustee for the Goodwin Memorial Library. This election, there are two three-year positions and two candidates running myself and my colleague, Allison Donta Venman. Allison and I have been part of a team of trustees working together to bring much needed improvements to our library. Allison is currently the head of our planning and design grant team and she has told you more about that process. I have served as a library trustee for six years and a co-chair for two of those years. I regularly represent the library at other committee meetings in town, such as Select Board, the Friends of the Goodwin Library, and occasionally the Building Committee. The library is a vital part of our town. It is the only public building that serves the entire population of Hadley. And I am proud to say it is well used. Co consistently, our usage numbers have risen steadily and often people come to a parking lot with no empty spots. For example, this February, attendance at the library was up 20% over February of last year, and that's even with all of the additional snow days we had. A little less than two years ago, we conducted a library survey. We came to town meeting and various places around Hadley and asked what you wanted to see happen at the library. The number one thing you were looking for was additional library hours. In response to that request, the trustees worked with the staff to add four hours or an additional open day to the library schedule at no additional cost to the taxpayer. Right now, our little library is open six days a week. Attendance has steadily increased. We have more volunteers helping than at any other time in my tenure. Last month, we had over 50 volunteer hours covered at the Goodwin. We have also added a position for a page. This is an opportunity for a high school student to work at the library and explore what a career in library science really means. I am proud to be part of a team that listens to our citizens and acts upon it. Another change at the library is the change in the focus of programming. The staff at the library has worked tirelessly to make it a welcoming place. Our current staff is focused on addressing the needs of our whole community. Director Patrick Barizo has brought in some innovative ideas like our small business speaker series. This series kicked off last month with Andrea and Christian Stanley and their business, Valley Malt. In the upcoming months, we will have other business owners from our town featured. Every other month, we host the work of a local artist in the first floor fiction room. The Knitters Club and Book Club also meet at the library on a regular basis. Patrick and the staff have also worked to reach out to our schools by visiting and getting to know the teachers and librarian at Hadley Elementary School in Hopkins, our library is connected and ready to assist our students with school projects. Just this week, Patrick connected with the art department at the high school and is hoping to have a high school art openings at our library. 
Our teen specialist runs craft programs, book clubs, and other programming for our middle and high schoolers. It is important that the library be a viable place for our middle and high school students to come at 2.15 when the high school closes to be able to do some work and gather around similar interests. Luna, our children's librarian, works magic with our younger children. There is always a new and creative event helping our children to connect with the library. Our four computer stations are filled regularly and well used. Another big success has been wine and beer tastings hosted by the Friends of the Goodwin. These sell out regularly and provide a lovely opportunity to socialize at our library, as well as try new local beverages. The Friends are an important part of the library and its future. For the past three years, I have been the trustee representative to the Friends and would like to invite you and your ideas to this wonderful, supportive group of patrons. Finally, please consider what your library does for you. Our annual budget at less than $200,000 provides books, programming, and educational opportunities abound for all. As an elected official, my job is to listen to you and advocate for our library. I appreciate your support on Election Day and look forward to working for the Library of Hadley's future. The next position is library trustee, two-year terms. There is one position. Speaking first is Maureen Jack. My name is Maureen Jock, and I have two children, Kayla and Tom, and my husband, Matt Jock. I would like to say thank you, first of all, to the Hadley Mothers Club for hosting this event, and Madam Moderator for moderating. A qualification according to the Hadley or the Massachusetts Public Library Handbook, is that you have to have an appreciation of the library and a desire to provide possible, the best possible services to the library. How do I fulfill this? By loving the library in a variety of ways. Being a voracious reader, socializing with the, li the Good Goodwin Library staff, taking Daisy Girl Scouts to the library for a tour, enjoying the glee on their faces while listening to Luna tell a story, feeling proud that the daisies were able to help the preschoolers with an activity, getting exciting news that a book has, that I ordered has, been, has come in, passing on my love of reading to my children, enjoying the camaraderie of talking to the Hadley knitters, attending wine and cider tastings, what do I bring to the table if elected as a trustee? Years of leadership as a Girl Scout leader, ability to plan events, willingness to be a team player. I work well with people. And in closing, I feel that I would make a good library trustee. I would appreciate your vote on Tuesday, April 14th. Thank you. The next speaker is Alan Weinberg. Hello, my name is Alan Weinberg. I live at 108 Bay Road in Hadley. I have lived there for about 40 years, and I am running for one of the library trustee positions. I really um, have to say that, as everyone has said, I love that library. It's been a wonderful, tremendously rich resource for not just my children, but my grandchildren over the last 40 years. Uh, it's a place that has uh, provided a place to gather, a place to learn, to enrich your, your life, and, um, and it's been a terrific place to go. It's one of my favorite places in town. And, and as other people have said, it's one of the few places in town where everybody of all ages can, uh, uh, can gather at no cost to take advantage of all of the wonderful programs and resources that the library has to offer. Now, uh, the library is a, a welcoming, cozy, wonderful place, but it has some needs that are, uh, are very important. And the trustees have been working, and the staff have been working extremely hard 
over the last few years to try to meet those needs. There are short-term needs that, were, that the trustees are working on, uh, such as improving the children's room and uh, the circulation desk, but there are also long-term uh, problems that, um, and needs uh, that uh, uh, are going to fo have to fold into the uh, work of the town building committee in terms of are we renovating, are we relocating, what, what are we doing to meet uh, access needs and uh, to use the space uh, to its full potential. <clears throat> the, as I said, the, the trustees and the staff have worked really, really hard. I've been to some of the meetings. I'm, I have worked uh, with the friends for the last three years, and uh, I'm really impressed with how hard they work. It'd be a privilege to be on that team with them to work forward to try to solve and enhance the programs of the library. And uh, I'd also like to say that uh, living in this town, it's, it's incredible how lucky and fortunate we are to have so many committed people who serve in town government and I would love to be able to uh, say that I could uh, count myself in that uh, company to serve the, the town and the library uh, in, in making the best possible future for all of the citizens of, of Hadley. So I'd appreciate your consideration for me and uh, thank you very much. The next position is for treasurer, and it's a one-year term. Speaking tonight is Linda Sanderson. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Thank you to Hadley Mothers Club. This is a valuable opportunity for the Hadley citizens and for the candidates to speak to you. I am a candidate for town treasurer. I first came to Hadley 30 years ago with my husband, Bill Dwyer. We raised our three children here in Hadley, and we also chose to locate our law practice here. I've been volunteering in Hadley for a long time. I served on Hadley's first Early Childhood Advisory Council, and later on Hopkins Academy's first high school council. I was a parent volunteer for the school's music, mock trial, and drama club programs, and I spent 12 years as a Hadley Girl Scout leader. My interest in running for town treasurer stems from my experience as a four-term four -term member of Hadley's Finance Committee. When I was first appointed to Finance Committee in 1987, I brought to the position my background legal skills in business management, financial accounting for trusts and estates, and tax and government reporting for individuals, corporations, and charitable organizations. I served for two terms that first round, working with the town's financial team and with the individual departments in preparing balanced operational budgets to present at annual town meeting. Four years ago, I was very happy to be asked to rejoin the Finance Committee, and I am now serving my fourth term. Balancing the town's annual budget has been challenging in terms of keeping the total budget within the projected revenues and also for balancing the different needs and priorities of our many town and school departments. It has been imp important to work respectfully with the other boards in town and working with the tri-board has been especially valuable to this, uh, the, to this process. There are three areas where I feel as a full-time treasurer I will want to devote more attention. First is revenue projections. The final budget the Finance Committee brings to annual town meeting needs to be covered by the projected revenues for the same period. If we are too conservative in our revenue projections, then budgets may need to be cut back too much. This year, by examining past revenues more closely, we were able to raise projected revenues by $100,000. This is $100,000 that will not need to be cut from the budget. As treasurer, I hope to be able to spend more time in this area to be sure we are projecting revenues to the town's best advantage. The second area is capital funding. As you've heard from the select board candidates, there are a number of capital projects in the pipeline that will need to be addressed. As treasurer, I would work with our select board, finance committee, and the town's advisors to determine the best way to fund the projects approved by the town. Hadley has an excellent bond, rate, bond rating that we want to maintain, so keeping an eye on our total fund balances 
investment rates, and borrowing terms will be extremely important. And the third area of uh, my concern is OPEB, OPEB, other post-employment benefits. This is the town's share of medical and life insurance for our retired employees. This issue has gained more attention in recent years and impacts all cities and towns. Hadley's unfunded liability currently exceeds $7 million. We now make annual contributions to an OPEB trust, but we will soon be required to do more. As treasurer, I want to talk with other towns about how they are managing the issue, then bring the options to the town's financial team, including the select board and finance committee, to find the most workable solution for Hadley. In closing, I want to thank Joan Zuzko and Connie Michkowski for their many years of service that they, and dedication to the treasurer's office. I look forward to continuing in a good working relationship with, uh, with Joan as well as with other members of our town hall financial team. Connie has generously offered me her support and ongoing assistance to help assure a smooth transition for all of us. It would be an honor to serve Hadley as your next town treasurer. Please vote Linda Sanderson next Tuesday, April 14th. Thank you. The next speaker is Shannon Schwab. I'd like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for hosting Candidate Night and for all of you for coming out. My name is Shannon Schwall and I'm running for Hadley Town Treasurer. I'm a new transplant to Hadley. I've been here three years. My family decided to move to Hadley almost on a whim. We needed to get out of the South. We've been here three winters and yes, we do everything by winners. We don't have those down there. My husband is the store manager at the Hadley Walmart. We have two daughters, both in the Hadley school systems, and that was one of the reasons we chose Hadley. We looked at many of the surrounding towns and there was a sense of community in Hadley that we needed. We had that down in, this, in Mississippi where we lived and it's something that means a lot we've been embraced by this community. I'm running for town treasurer because I feel like my background and my work ethic would bring a lot to the table. I've got 20 plus years of experience in accounting and in human resources and that's something that that office certainly uses on a daily basis. Currently, I'm working for FACES in Northampton as the bookkeeper and human resource manager. There aren't a lot of employees there, but my experience in the previous communities that we've lived in has provided a lot of experience. Working with Lowe's for 345 plus employees doing benefits, retirement plans, payroll, scheduling, and the financials for all of those stores has given me a lot of experience in budgeting, taxes, and anything that is needed in that area. I have extensive volunteer work nationally with the Women's Service League and with the Junior Auxiliary, and most recently here in Hadley with the PTO. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight and thank you again for your consideration. We have now reached the end of the candidate statements and will break to collect questions from the audience. We will reconvene in about 10, 15 minutes. We've now reconvened and I will read the questions and the candidates will have three minutes to respond to each question. We're going to start with the candidate for the school committee and I will read the first question. Given the potential for incidents of racism or bigotry, would it be a good idea for Hadley to establish a Human Rights Commission? 
And we're now going to hear from Paul Pfeiffer, candidate for school committee. Thank you. You know, one of the things I think I bring to this, uh, to this position is a background in a lot of uh, human resources work. I've been managing over 150 people for the last six years now. And one thing I've learned is to not jump to conclusions too quickly and to, to understand that usually there's more than just two sides to the story, there's often three or four. And so I really try to gather all the information before making recommendations or uh, jumping to any conclusion or making decisions. And so that question obviously has a lot of merit. Somebody in the community is concerned about a very important issue that uh, we should all take very seriously. That said, uh, I don't know what the extent of the problem is. I don't know what the possible solution would be. So while it's a very uh, uh, open possibility, something I think we would need to discuss and explore. Uh, I don't know if, what the right answer is because I don't know the extent of the, the problem. Uh, one thing too is that I know these issues uh, are best handled through open communication, through dialogue, through creating safe spaces for people to, to talk about their issues, talk about their own truths. And I think that's something that a school committee might have a responsibility to do, is set those structures in place, implement those policies in the best fashion, such that everybody feels heard. Everybody feels that they can, they can contribute as is needed in a viable community. And so if there are others, uh, given their race, their, their gender, their what have you, their class, what have you, uh, if they don't feel included in that process, I think that's something a, a school committee needs to pay attention to and address it both in internal processes and what it does to set up uh, a structure for the school. Again, coming back to the kids, I think kids are always watching, right? They're always watching what parents do and we either set good or bad examples, uh, whether we intend to or not. And so this might be an issue where we need to lead and we need to, to show our children how, uh, how we handle tough issues and how we create open dialogue. But again, on this particular issue, I'd want to hear more, I'd want to ask more, I'd want to talk more before reaching any conclusions. Thank you. That same question is being asked of the selectmen. Speaking to it first will be Joyce Chungla. We're going to read the question one more time. Given the potential for incidents of racism or bigotry, would it be a good idea for Hadley to establish a human rights commission? Anything possible here in Hadley, and if somebody is having an issue, um, I would certainly hope that they would call one of the board of select person and have a conversation with them, bring their issue to us. We want everybody that lives in Hadley to feel comfortable, um, no matter what gender, race, color they are. Um, this is an open community, and we hope that we want to make everybody feel at home here. So if they would just you know, come to us, um, I don't see why we wouldn't establish a commission, but again, it would be a good dialogue for us to have. I work in Northampton um, at a hospital that has a lot of diversity, and uh, it, it's very acceptable, and I'm sure that it's, it, and it is acceptable here in Hadley also. So um, I wish they would just bring it forward and we would have discussion on it. Speaking next is Gerald Devine. I actually don't know what a Human Rights Commission is or what they would do. Um, if you have problems with racism and, and whether it's um, for whatever reason, it needs to be dealt with by professionals and I think professionals should be involved immediately. I, I think that if we gave this to a, a, a lay group of people to try to uh, get involved with it that we could go in a wrong direction and again, I, I just want us to go in the right direction regarding these things. Professionals should be involved in whatever it takes to get that done. I don't think there's anybody here or in this room or in this town that or I, I'm going to venture to guess that racism is not not something that uh, is going to be tolerated by any public officials in this town 
and anything that we need to do to root it out, find out where it is and, and, and fix it, uh, where I'm, I would certainly be supportive of. Thank you. Speaking next is John Michkowski, Sr. I think racism, there's a zero, zero tolerance in Hadley for that. I think we're all adults. We can sit down at a round table and talk our, our problems out and come up with some viable uh, solution to it. And again, if, if we can't do it, then it's time to set some kind of a commission up that would be in a professional uh, level that deals with this all the time and it would be sent forward to them. But I, uh, over the years, I found myself that a lot of times you can work things out just by sitting and talking and be reasonable about it and come to a good solution for both parties. Thank you. The next question is also for the selectmen. What is your opinion for the town to vote for or against the possible purchase of the Montgomery Rose property and why? I'm not sure whether this question is as relevant as all the people who looked at it think it is, but um, we'll hear first from Joyce Chunglo. It's a big ticket item um, and I'm not sure exactly how the voters of Hadley are going to want to spend their money. Um, we have issues that we need to take care of. We have a, a building committee that's in place right now that's looking at all options on what we should be doing after we sell the North Hadley Hall. Um, that still is in the process also. A three million dollar price tag what is it going to hit on people's pocketbooks? I mean, everybody's going to want to take a look at that. Um, Two million dollars negotiable, uh, maybe a lower price, and then you have a million dollar price tag on um, renovations to the property for whatever use that um, people feel they want to have up there, whether it be the fire station, uh, the DPW. Um, those are the things that are um, being brought forth at town meeting. I'm not sure if that's the most viable thing. I think it's up for the voters of Hadley to um, vote on it, not just the five board of selectmen. It's going to be a town vote. It's not going to be just my opinion. It's, a, it's the voters' opinion. So, I mean, let it come forward and see what the voters want. Speaking next is Gerald Devine. I'm not against any of the options that are available to the town, but I certainly am not going to comment as to uh, whether or not it's viable when we have no idea what the cost would be to renovate that to make that part of the town's um, uh, long-range plan as to what we're going to do with our buildings. We have an awful lot of buildings here, and I think it's time to sit down, evaluate each and every one of them that we have, and look for a viable plan that we can implement on a five- and ten-year plan so that we understand how we're going to go forward with our buildings. You're talking about a monumental amount of money being spent on not just one building, but many buildings in this town. And I think the voters are entitled for us to come forward with a plan. We have, a pl we have the committee that's been established now. They're looking at the buildings and they're coming forth understanding the needs and now we have to understand what the costs are to get these buildings up to what we need them to be. So, I mean, I'd love to say that, yeah, that's the, that's the answer to all our prayers. All we have to do is and buy that building and, and everything will go away, but we don't have any numbers available to us today that make any sense as to what we, to make a decision with. And until we do, I, I don't think it's a fair question for us to, um, to answer um, one way or the other. I'll just tell you that it's not off the table as far as I'm concerned. Speaking next is John Mischkowski, Sr. <clears throat> Mr. Ted Johnson offered this. He uh, gave up his. Rose, rose garden uh, raising uh, roses. And when I seen this, this to me is the best offer the town ever had in 30 years. 
they're talking about in this town voted to sell the North Hadley Hall. That building right there that's got 26,000 square feet of metal buildings, the, f the fire trucks and fire apparatus, not only in North Hadley could be parked in there and back in there and in business, but a lot of the apparatus that is seasonal in our uh, main station could be put in there. If you look at um, where the DPW is now, that originally back in its year was bought for the sole purpose of the sewer plant. It is, the highway department was moved in by the selectmen, built a building there, and overtook that complete site. There is no room for any sewer expansion. The sewer is a 10-year federal pl uh, permit process to move that anywhere, so that's not going to happen. And yet, you're in the aquifer recharge area, Montgomery Rose isn't. So not only to serve the DPW, the fire, uh, there's plenty of other municipal uses. And it's not a short-term buy, it's a long-term buy. There's 14 acres of buildings and buildable land. There's 17 acres of uh, APR land. And it has a uh, $25,000 a year uh, rental on a, on a cell tower. It has its own water supply. It has a 10,000 gallon fuel oil uh, reserve. It has a standby generator. Um, again, it's w within uh, sight of the sewer uh, uh, pump station on Stockbridge Road. Uh, they ask, well, a million dollars. It's two million, up to two million for the purchase. And again, uh, that to me is one heck of a buy. But the million dollars won't cover everything. But this is a long-term project here, to build a salt sol shed, to create a, a building where all the town vehicles, not only highway, police, fire, and all municipal vehicles need to be washed and all that uh, fluid. You just can't let that run out. That's going to be processed and the end result into the uh, sewer department. So I, I hope the, the select board and all the other boards look way beyond what they can see up front. I served on that uh, public safety uh, building committee and I warned those guys, I could read blueprints and I, I, I told these guys, I says, when you guys operate, uh, occupy this building, it's gonna be to capacity. And guess what happened? It is to capacity. We can't make these mistakes again. So please try to get as much information, everybody, and vote accordingly. Thank you. The next question is also for the selectmen. An elected officer is tasked with representing his or her constituency. When the constituency clearly supports something you strongly oppose, how do you handle this? We're going to hear first from Joyce Chunglo. Well, that has happened on an occasion. <laughs> Needless to say that I have opposed on some things, but um, with being able to listen to people um, and appreciating other people's opinions, I feel that that's you know, uh, a good thing for us, that we're a five-member board. We're not an individual board. So we can all have our own opinions, but when it comes to the final vote, it's always what's best for the town, not what's best for myself. So, you know, I try to make those decisions as best as possible, and I think I have over the years. Um, I think that's all you have to keep in mind. It's not your opinion that counts, except for what you think it is. And if you really feel strongly about your opinion, then it's up to you to make other people see what your opinion is and how you feel would not be a good thing for the town. But if it's weighing more the other way, then, you know, you kind of listen to them and go with the vote. I've done that too, but sometimes I haven't. So I mean, it's just how you feel that you feel is the best for the town. So. Speaking next is Gerald Devine. I think that people vote for you so that you express your opinion. 
Um, I, I've never, I, the three of us have no trouble expressing our opinion. God knows that's true. What I'm saying is though that people elect us here and we have a lot of, info, people elect you on the select board, you have a tremendous amount of information. Some of it's always not disseminated to everybody that's out there for whatever reason, but sometimes you have to just make a decision. I mean, nobody wanted a water treatment plant, I understand that, but we needed a water treatment plant. When the perchlorate was going on up in North Hadley, we had to make a decision. It cost the town $5.1 million. That's money that has to come out of people's pockets. So if you think it was a popular decision, it's not necessarily. There's difficult decisions that need to be made by selectmen and people in this town. And you know, I ask you to please try to research it as much as you can. I'm gonna vote the way I feel is the best thing for the town, and I always will. Thank you. Speaking next is John Michkowski, senior. I think it's great when, when the selectmen have debate and really get into the research and the studying of every issue that is faced by, by the selectmen. Um, I personally like to do as much research I can on every issue that comes prior to the meeting, not during the meeting or after the meeting. I mean, there's things that happen at a meeting and brings out new questions, new theories, and yet it always don't, it not necessarily has to be voted right there. It could be postponed to a later, a later date. And again, uh, I think the more research, the more information the board does, the better decisions they can make for the town of Hadley. And over the years that I've spent on a sewer commission and board of selectmen, sure, there's this guy or this woman thinks this should be better, but that's all part of it. The end result is the best solution for the town, and that's what we have to do. Thank you. And that's the end of the questions. I want to thank all the candidates for the wonderful job you did tonight, and for, to the audience for the participation. And I'm going to return you now to Denise Devine of the Hadley Mothers Club. Thank you uh, again, Mary Jane. Um, I also wanted to mention um, that Hadley Mothers Club will be having our recycling day April 25th at um, Hadley Elementary School from, one, um, from 8 to 1. And um, we have a website now, so you can go on our website. It's www.hadleymothersclub.org. Very easy. So if you go on there, you'll see all the information a list of all the fees um, for all the different items that we'll take that day. And this is a great fundraiser for us. We really appreciate all the support. Um, there'll be a bottle and can drive, the Hopkins, Hopkins Academy Van Boosters will be there. Um, Salvation Army will have a truck there for an hour. Um, and we are now taking um, credit cards also via Square. So um, we hope that you come and support us and we appreciate all the candidates coming and everyone that came this evening and thank you very much. <laughs>